So, so far in our previous 106 lecture, uh, we talked about the position of objects, and we talked about the motion of those objects at a certain rate that we called the velocity. And in those sorts of simple problems, the velocity stays constant. You know, the car moves to the right at 10 meters per second from point A to point B, and it's 10 meters per second the whole way. So what we're going to do next is introduce the possibility of velocity changing, and just like how if we talked about the position changing, we talked about the rate of that change, which was the velocity, if the velocity changes, we need to talk about the rate of that change, which has its own name, and that is acceleration. So acceleration is the rate of change of the velocity. And uh, similar to our, you know, equation definition of velocity, um, we can write this rate of change like this. A uh, equals delta V over delta T. So it's the change in velocity over the change in time, the, the time interval. Um, and again, since we're talking about motion in the x direction in this chapter, we put x subscripts on both of these. This is not super necessary for chapter one, but in chapter two, fair warning, we are going to have multiple accelerations and multiple velocities to represent what's going on in different directions. So it's good to get in the habit of recognizing those subscripts on those on those variables now. Okay, so this is our um, our working definition of acceleration for now, the change in velocity over the change in time. So anytime we have a change in the velocity of an object, it has undergone acceleration. It had an acceleration that was not zero. If we have an object that is moving with constant velocity, well, in that case, for, you know, for whatever time goes by there, delta v is zero, right, if the velocity is staying the same, and so zero over whatever gives us an acceleration of zero. So if a equals zero, that just means we have a constant velocity. And this was the condition on that equation that we, um, that we had used in, in, the, in the last lecture. So taking this acceleration equation, we can rearrange it slightly to give us a, uh, an equation that'll turn out to be more useful. So if I multiply both sides of this by delta t, I get delta t times a equals delta v. And now delta t and delta v I can both replace with their other versions, right? Delta v, if, our, if we're undergoing some change in velocity, that means we're ending up at a different velocity and we started at ended up at a different velocity than we started at. Um, and so there is some initial velocity and some final velocity, and we can write delta v as v final minus v initial, just like we can any other variable. Our acceleration is here. And delta t here, that's, you know, t final minus t initial, but we're assuming that we're starting our imaginary stopwatches at zero in all of these problems, so t initial is zero. So t final is the only time in the problem, so we're just going to call that t for now. t times a equals v final minus v initial. I'm going to do one more thing to rearrange it. I'm going to move this v initial to the other side, and then I'm going to swap the, <laughs> swap the two sides of the equal sign, so we're solving for v final. And we get the following, v final equals v initial plus a times t. So this actually looks a lot like the equation we had in the last lecture, that was x final equals x initial plus vt for, for constant velocity. Um, so here, yeah, and that's just coming because the velocity is the rate of change of the position. This equation works because the acceleration is the rate of change of the velocity. Um, so if we know how fast we're going at the beginning of a problem, we know our acceleration and we know our time, we can, you know, we know some amount of time that has gone by, we can plug those in and find out our velocity, find out how fast we're going at the end of the problem. Or similarly, you know, if we know how fast we were going at the end and how fast we we're going at the beginning, and we know how long it took us to undergo that change, we could solve for the acceleration. Um, all right, so I'm, I'm boxing some equations because we're collecting a little set of equations that we're gonna add a couple more to um, over the course of this and the next lecture. 
before we um, move on to the next equation, I, just, I should mention one thing about the, the units of acceleration, so I forgot to do that here. So, as you know, our acceleration, we use the lowercase a variable for, and the units of a uh, are, we can see from this equation, our units have to be units of velocity divided by units of time. So our units are meters per second over seconds, which gives us meters per second per second, or we can also write that as meters per second squared. Any of these three mean is the same thing. Use whatever, um, you know, whatever makes the most sense to you. But the idea is, and, and these are kind of weird units, like what is a meter per second squared? Well, this is the way I would think about it. It is the number of meters per second your velocity is changing over, you know, the number of seconds it takes to do that. So that's why you have this second squared uh, in the denominator. Looking one last time at this equation for acceleration, uh, we also see one other important thing, and that is uh, we know from last time that velocities can be positive or negative, right? A positive velocity is one to the right or in the plus x direction. A negative velocity is one to the left or in the minus x direction. So just looking at this, if our velocities can be positive or negative, then delta v, our change in velocities, also could be a negative number. And that means our acceleration could also be a negative number as well. So what does that positive or negative acceleration mean? So before we, before we do some equations, I think this is, you know, a useful little conceptual exercise. So let's imagine that we have a car. Uh, I will warn you, this is the most detailed car I will draw over the course of the semester. <laughs> they, uh, they only get worse from here. Um, so let's say we have a car, and at, at some initial time, we're not going to worry about the actual time values, it doesn't matter. We'll say uh, at some initial point, it is going to the right at 10 meters per second. And some amount of time later, it's over here. Oh, that's, I told you it would get worse, but maybe that's too much worse. Okay. <laughs> uh, and some amount of time later, its velocity has changed to 20 meters per second. Okay, so, oh, let's make this 25, and what the heck, let's use actual numbers, because maybe that'll, that'll be easy. So let's say it takes um, three seconds to, to get from from this velocity to this velocity. So this is at time t equals zero. This is at time t equals three seconds. Okay, so we can calculate our acceleration, right? Delta v over delta t. So v final is 25 meters per second. And I'm writing a plus sign there because it is in the positive direction. It never hurts to, you know, <laughs> to pay, call attention to the fact that you thought about that. Uh, minus, v initial, which is plus 10 meters per second, divided by our time interval, which is from zero seconds to three seconds, so this is three seconds, and 25 minus 10 is 15, divided by three gives us five, so our acceleration is five meters per second squared. This turns out to be a pretty darn fast acceleration for a car, but we don't, um, we don't need to make this super realistic, we're just playing with numbers here. Okay, so uh, our acceleration, we ended up with a positive number and our velocity has increased from 10 meters per second to 25 meters per second. Okay, um, in this case, the car has sped up, right? It started out going slower and it ended up going faster. Let's do a slightly different example. Let's change this to, uh, we'll change this to four meters per second to the right, and we'll stick with t equals three seconds. So now, v final is four meters per second, v initial is 10 meters per second, and the time it took is still three seconds, so I get four minus 10 is negative six divided by three, which gives me minus two meters per second squared as our acceleration. So in this case, our car started out at 10 meters per second, slowed down to four meters per second, and we ended up with a, ended up with a negative acceleration. 
we'll, we'll pause there and think about that for a second. So it looks like this positive acceleration meant we sped up and this negative acceleration meant we slowed down. That is sometimes true, but also sometimes not true, and, and we'll talk about when it's not true right now. So let's erase this example, and let's say, let's say we have a car going to the left now, and it starts out going um, 10 meters per second, and ends up over here going four meters per second to the left. So, uh, and, oh, and it still takes three seconds to, to do that. So what is our acceleration now? Well, V final is equal to four meters per second, but it's to the left, so this is actually minus four, right? With velocity, our plus and minus sign matters. We gotta pay attention to that. Uh, v initial, so V final minus V initial. V initial is 10 meters per second, but that is also in the negative direction, so it's minus four minus negative 10. Uh, and our time was three seconds. So minus four minus negative 10 gives us plus six in the numerator over three, gives us plus two meters per second squared. So in this case, our acceleration is positive. We get a positive acceleration number and our car started out at a fast-ish speed and ended up at a slower speed. Okay, so it's not just whether acceleration is positive or negative that tells you if you're speeding up or slowing down, it is also what direction you're going. So here's our, here's our actual rule for that. Um, if our acceleration and the velocity are in the same direction, That means we speed up. Speed up is not a super physics-y term. You know, we are, we are increasing the magnitude of our velocity. We are increasing our speed is maybe the more physics-y way to say that, but we all know what speeding up means. Uh, if A and V are in opposite directions, we say we are slowing down, or in physics-y language, you know, our speed is decreasing. Um, yeah, so that's, that's how that works. We can also see why this works from the equation that we just talked about, and that was our V final equals, or sorry, yeah, V final equals V initial plus A times T. So, so our, whether our speed is increasing or decreasing depends on uh, how things change from V initial to V final. So if V initial is negative, if we wanna make the magnitude of that number bigger, we wanna make it more negative, we have to add a negative number to it, and the time is always positive, right? So what that means is if I want V final to be big and negative, and V initial is negative, I have to add a negative number that's coming from a negative acceleration. So my speed increases if A and V are both negative, or if my velocity is positive, I wanna add a positive number to it so my acceleration should be positive. So A and V being in the same direction is the same as saying A and V have the same sign. So if they have the same sign, if they're both positive or they're both negative, we're speeding up. If one's positive and one's negative, either way, um, we are slowing down. So that's the, that's the rule for that. I think that's useful to, to pay attention to.